Hey, what's going on guys? Brian here. Today's video will be a quick tutorial on how to detect contact in Sprite Kit using Swift. So yeah, let's begin. First things first, as always, let's create a blank Xcode project. I'm going to create a game. Hit next. You can call this whatever you want as usual. I'm just going to call this contact. Uh, no, actually detect contact. Yeah. Next, save it on my desktop. Make this bigger. All right, so let's go into your game scene. That's Swift. All right. I'm gonna wait a bit for this to index, so it's not slow when we're writing code. All right, so it's done indexing now. So let's get rid of this code that we don't need. All right, we don't need this either. Okay. Now let's create two sprite nodes. Let's call the first one um, player equal to SK sprite node. The second one would be called enemy, equal to the SK sprite node as well. Now let's set up the these two sprite nodes. So let's say player equals to SK sprite node, image name, nope, not that one, not SK physics body. Player equals an SK sprite node, image name, there we go. And we're gonna call this spaceship. And if you don't know what spaceship is referring to, it's referring to the one and only spaceship in here that's well that's in the project every time you create a brand new game in Xcode. So yeah, player dot name. Let's set this to player. Alright. And we say player dot anchor point equals to CG point x 0.5 and y 0.5. Before that, I forgot, let's set up the anchor point for the scene. If I can type right. CG point 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and yeah. So let's say player dot size equals to a CG size of width of 90 and height of 90. Player dot position. Let's set this to be 0 for the X and negative 200 for the Y. And then now let's set up the physics body for this player. So say SK physics body S equals to SK physics body. Open parentheses. Now let's say rectangle of size. This one right here, and then the rectangle size will be player dot size. And you'll see in a minute what that does. All right. Next will be player dot physics body dot affected by gravity equals false. Now I'm pretty sure you guys can tell what that does. It pretty much says that the player won't be affected by the gravity. All right. So it will be static, be right in the middle of the screen, and it won't move. So let's say player dot physics body dot dynamic equals to false, meaning no other sprite node will be able to push this uh, sprite node out of the way. So at the top, let's create one more thing. Let's say struct. Okay, let's call this collider type. And here, the first thing we're going to write is say static let player of type you went 32 equals to 1 and static let enemy equals to you went 32 equals 2. Now what this does is we're going to um, put these different sprites into their own category and you'll see what that does and and helps with in a minute. So say player dot physics bodies that category bit mask equals to collider type dot player say player dot physics bodies dot collision bit mask equals to collider type at enemy I say player dot physics body dot contact bit mask equals to collider type that enemy as well so I'm going to explain what that does so we set the category bit mask which is the category this sprite knows in which is player okay as for collision bit mask we set it to be enemy well now what that means is this player or the sprite node will collide with the, the group of enemy. So when we set up the enemy sprite node, we're going to set its category bit mass to enemies. So now they both will collide with each other. And for contact the test bit mass, this is set to enemy. So that means when this player con uh, collides with enemy, we will be notified of the collision. All right. So now let's add this player to the scene. Okay, now I'm just going to copy this exact code because 
enemy is pretty much the same thing, just slightly different. So I'm going to copy that and paste it. Now I'm going to change all the players to be enemy. I'm going to copy this and be easier. Just paste this for everything else. Alright. As for the name, we're going to change this to enemy. Okay. And for the position, we're going to say uh, 400 instead of negative 200. The category would be enemy. And we don't need to set the rest of these because we already set it up up here for the player. So that's to let you know that if you set up the collision bit mask and contact bit mask for a sprite note, you don't have to set it for the other one, which you set it for, for right here. Okay. So let's add this to the scene as well. So let's say enemy. All right. Now one more thing we need to do is we don't need these functions anymore. Okay. Now that we got rid of those two functions that we don't need, right? Let's create one more function. But before we do that, we need to say sk physics world no, physics contact delegate. There we go. And then in the movie view, let's say self dot physics world dot contact delegate equal to self. Now what that does is we're saying that this scene or this physics world will be in charge of the contact situation, meaning that any contact that happened, this scene will handle it. All right. So at the bottom now, I say did begin contact this function right here. Now, if we didn't have this here and we didn't set up this physics world contact delegate to be self, we will never be able to access this function. Okay. So now let's set up this function now in here. So let's say first, first body equal to an SK physics body and second body equal to an SK physics body. Now I'm going to make a little bit more room here so you can see better. All right. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, if contact that body a that node that name equal equals to player. Then that means the first body will be contact that body A, and the second body would be contact that body B. Now, if contact that body A dot node dot name is not player, then that means the first body will be contact that body B instead, and second body would be contact body A. All right, now let's do a short run through what that does, right? First, we're checking to see if the contact right here, if body A that node that name, if the first, if body A's node that name equals the player, which refers to this right here, this player node, then that means the first body would be body A and the second body would be body B and vice versa for this one. Hope you guys can understand that. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna say if first body dot name dot node dot name equal equals to player and second body dot node dot name equal equals to enemy then we're gonna put a print statement in here saying um, contact detected and for another print statement saying contact happened between player and enemy. All right. So that should get rid of those two triangles right there. And yeah, that's pretty much all we need. Um, one last thing we're going to set up in the game view controller. We say SK view that shows physics equals to true. Now what that does is it's going to show the physics in the game. So any sprite node or any node that has some form of physics to it, it will show that form of physics. So now I'm going to run this on iPhone 4S and it will pop up in the console contact detected and contact happened between player and an enemy when the player uh, touches this enemy sprite node. All right, so let's run it. All right, it's loading up now and you're going to see a spaceship spawn up here and it's going to fall down and hit this one. Oh, my mistake. 
For affected by gravity, we say it's a false, so that it's static. But we don't want that. We want to say true, that it will fall according to gravity. Now we, when we run it again, it will fall now. Hmm. It's still not falling. Oh, dynamic. We don't need dynamic in this one. Run it again. There we go. Now it fell. And boom, contact detected. Contact happened between player and enemy. So you saw that it bounced a little bit, so let you know that it actually did co uh, collide with this node right here. So I'm going to run it again just to show you that it actually works and that contact has been detected. And here we go. Boom. It bounced, it hit it, and contact was detected. So yeah, that wraps it up for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video.